a very, very special guest for you guys today. This is Pastor Philip Barnett. Um, he was a pastor in Ukraine 26 years, 26 years, and God gave him a prophecy back in 2007. He's going to tell you about this prophecy. Uh, God gave me a series of visions about what would take place in the future that Russia would invade Ukraine. And after they invaded Ukraine, then they would come against the nation of Israel. In the 1990s, I had a dream one day, one night, and I've been preaching over 50 years. And I learned when I was just a young teenager that sometimes I would think of a scripture or something in the evening. And if I didn't write that down, the next morning I would forget the verse or whatever I had thought about the night before. So I would always about all my life, I would keep a piece of paper, uh, something there on an end table by where I would sleep that I could write down any verses or thoughts that I had during the night. And so I had this dream. It was an unbelievable dream. And I thought, oh, I don't need to write that down. I'll never forget that. It was about five o'clock in the morning. I, I woke up a couple of hours later and I thought I had a dream. What was the dream about? And I couldn't remember. And for a week, I prayed, I fasted, I did everything I could to try to remember the dream. What I, I, I thought about, well, what was I thinking about the, before I went to sleep? And maybe that would jog my memory, but I, I lost the dream. I couldn't remember it. Ten years later, I had the dream again. And during the dream, and this is a long, complex dream, I remembered everything that was going to take place. And in the dream, I was asleep, but I was understanding oh this will be next this will be next and then all of a sudden the dream was almost to the end and i knew it was coming to the end and i thought this is the dream that i had that i forgot all those years ago and so i raised up in bed i was still asleep and i raised up in bed it's like this was the dream and i sat on the edge of the bed and of course that time i didn't repeat the same mistake i wrote it down and that was in 2007 it lasted for five hours and uh, God was showing me that Russia was going to come against Ukraine. There would be war with Ukraine and Russia, and it would eventually, Russia would capture Eastern Ukraine, not Western Ukraine, but Eastern Ukraine. Eventually, they would, they would capture Kiev. There would be two evacuations from Kiev. The first one would take place when Russia began the invasion. The second, evacuation from Kiev would take place when a uh, nuclear war was getting ready to start between the United States and a reformed Soviet Union with Russia, Belarus, and eastern Ukraine. Uh, Russia is now sending tactical nuclear weapons into Belarus, uh, Belarus. Uh, they have equipped at least uh, a dozen uh, of their fighter jets to take uh, tactical Russian nuclear missiles. They are also installing ICBMs in 81 leftover tubes or, or silos that uh, that the Soviets had, uh, you know, during the Soviet Union. They've renovated about five or six of them. They plan on renovating more. But not only is Russia giving uh, uh, Belarus the the tactical nukes, they're going to give them the actual ICBMs, which are city killers. Nuclear missiles that were like giant frozen mountains. And when I'd had the dream in 1997, I was in central Ukraine by an Israeli city, with a city full of a lot of Jewish people called Uman. And from Uman, I, God showed me all of eastern Ukraine, starting at the north, and all the way looking to the south to Odessa and Crimea, and that there would be eight American nuclear weapons that would destroy eastern Ukraine, starting at Kiev and making a circle all the way down to Odessa. Then when the dream repeated uh, 10 years later, everything was exactly the same in the dream, except I was much, much closer to those nuclear missiles that were that were like mountains, but they were actually just frozen giant ICBM missiles. And uh, I asked in the dream, not the vision, but the dream that came before the four visions, I asked in the dream, 
what is this mountain? There are no mountains like this in Ukraine. And a lady responded to me, Azovmina. And I asked, Azovmina, what? And she said again, Azovmina. I didn't understand what that meant. And so I asked the Lord, Lord, what does Azovmina mean? And he says, write it down. So I, I got up out of the floor where I was praying and I wrote it down slowly. Capital A, and I paused. Z, and I paused. O, and I paused. V, and I paused. And I thought, oh, Azov. This has to do with the Azovsky C, something. So I kept writing M, cap, all the letters I wrote in capital letters. M, pause, E, pause, N, pause, A. I thought, man, ah, I know what that is. And I ran to the other room, grabbed my Bible, and came back and opened the book of Daniel where the hand, the fingers had appeared writing on the wall when uh, the Babylonians and the rulers and the king was, they were toasting the idols. So the writing that the fingers wrote were menna, menna, you farce, you are weighed in the balance and you're found wanting and your kingdom is given over to the Medes and the Persians. And that night Babylon fell to the Medes and the Persians. And so I felt kind of alone. It's like, Lord, I need some confirmation. I'm, I'm not looking for a sign, Lord. I'm going to do everything you told me to do. But if I do it right, and the Lord told me, he said, you can't add anything to what I told you that night, and you can't take anything away from what I gave you that night. Don't add to, don't take away from it. And if you tell everything like I told you, then later on I will give you more information. And so I said, Lord, if I do everything right, could you somehow show me that you're pleased with, with the presentation that I haven't added anything to it? I haven't taken anything away. A man comes up to me. I'd never seen the man before. I'd never given a prophecy anything like this before in my life, even though I'd preached for many, many years. And this man came to me. He said, when you were talking about a Zogmina, you said that it Zobina meant that from the Dnieper River to the Russian border, from the Belarusian Ukrainian border to the north to the Azovsky Sea in the south, that eastern Ukraine would all be destroyed by nuclear war after Russia occupies eastern Ukraine. He said, When you said that, I knew you were talking about my town of Minah. And I looked at him and I asked, There's a town in Ukraine called Minah? He said, Yes. He said, I was born there. He said, when I was a little boy, the grandparents, grandfathers and grandmothers, they called it Mene, but now it's called Mena. Well, I asked him, where is that town? He said, it's right against the Belarusian border. So Azov Mena, Azov from the Azovsky Sea to Mena. I guess that's why it's pronounced the way it's pronounced in the dream, Azov Mena from the Dnieper River to the Russian border, from the Azovsky Sea to the Belarusian border to the town of Mena, all of eastern Ukraine will eventually be destroyed. When the first evacuation of Kiev took place on February the 24th last year, I, my phone was ringing off the hook, the uh, text messages, emails, Philip, are we going to have nuclear war? And I said, no, not right now. God said in his opening, after Russia captures eastern Ukraine, then they will come against Israel, and that's when the nuclear war start, will start. And Bella, part of most of Belarus, part of Russia, and eastern Ukraine will be destroyed in the nuclear war. Wow, folks, this is really getting real. Let me stop you here. So in 2007, God gave you this prophecy, and everybody at the time thought you were totally crazy. You didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah. And now, since it has happened, uh, people now want to contact you. But according to your prophecy, it's being fulfilled right now. There's already been one major evacuation from Kiev. So what we're waiting on now, I guess, is Russia to go ahead and finish taking that whole eastern part of Ukraine. And once that happens, then we are getting very close to the, uh, you said the United States is going to attack uh, Russia with eight nuclear weapons destroy their army. Could you go over that a little bit more? And you also said, I think, that uh, Russia would do a counter strike against the United States of America and destroy at least, what, 10 or 12 American cities? Is that uh, what God told you in the prophecy? Yeah, America is going 
to have eight nuclear weapons to hit Russia. Those eight nuclear weapons that I saw in the vision hit Eastern Ukraine. There were other American nuclear weapons that took out much of Belarus, including Minsk, including Moscow and Russia and Siberia. There were many more nuclear weapons than just those eight. The vision specifically dealt with Ukraine, but it also, when God talked to me that night in 2007, he said, I've told other people this, they have all refused to, to tell what I gave them. And so he says, I've called you to be a prophet, not just to Ukraine, but to many countries. So the United States of America and NATO is going to launch a first strike on Russia. Is that what you've seen? They're gonna launch no, a, no? Not a first strike. I don't know who launches the first weapons because okay. many Russian nuclear weapons are going to take out American cities. Can you name the American cities again that will be nuked just to warn the people in those areas that if they need to move, if they need to move from their location, they will have a warning uh, and, and they will know can, if you can name as many as possible. Okay. And Paul, people from all over the United States are contacting me nonstop. Where do I move to? All over. It's all over. Well, just just move cities. out of those cities. It's going to be nuked, I guess, right? Yeah. All right. The very first Russian nuclear weapon will destroy the city of Chicago. Very first one. The next city that will be destroyed will be Detroit. The next city that will be destroyed will be, uh, oh, excuse me, one that I left out over Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee. The next one will be Cleveland, Ohio. The next one will be St. Louis, and it, missiles will work their way down. Memphis, Tennessee will be hit. Nashville, Nashville will be hit. Uh, Denver, Colorado will be hit. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Little Rock, Arkansas, which that concerned me. I didn't understand. God, why are you going to allow Little Rock to be hit? I don't understand that. It's not a hub of immorality like New York City or Los Angeles. Anyway, Los Angeles, San Francisco will be hit. Uh, New Orleans will be hit. New York City will be hit by three nuclear weapons. Washington, D.C. will be hit by two nuclear weapons. God is going to drain the swamp himself, okay? Uh, Boston will be hit. Baltimore will be hit. There will be safe zones in America. The safe zone for the Northeast will be Cincinnati and the land above Cincinnati and to the south of Cincinnati. There will be a safe zone that God will allow people from the Northeast to flee to so that they won't be destroyed in the nuclear war after the rapture. There will be a safe zone in Arizona. There will be a safe zone in Alabama. There will be a safe zone on the south eastern part of the uh, Smoky Mountains, the area of Cleveland, Tennessee, and Chattanooga, and that area will be a safe zone. Uh, there will be a massive safe zone in Texas, Oklahoma, central Kansas, far eastern and far western Kansas will be destroyed because St. Louis will be hit. And these nuclear weapons, some of them are not just city destroyers, they can destroy entire states. They're massive, some of these weapons. Uh, also, the Northern Plains, North and South Dakota, Nebraska will be safe zones. I will say at the midpoint of the tribulation period, those who are from Rapid City, South Dakota, they need to be prepared because the Chinese will try to capture at the midpoint of the tribulation period, the airport and the city of Rapid City. They will come out of Canada. Also, I preached uh, to people, Baptist people in South uh, Texas, that at the midpoint of the tribulation period, the Chinese will come across the border to destroy Texas and Oklahoma. Let me, let me say something about a few years ago, over 5 million refugees fled out of Syria and northern Iraq into Europe. Why did God allow that? Because there's getting ready to be a nuclear war there before the rapture, and God was allowing Christians, all the Christians fled because there's getting ready to be a nuclear war there before the rapture. When the Chinese come into Mexico, they will come across northern Mexico to attack 
Arizona, Texas, New Mexico. The, New Mexico will be basically destroyed by nuclear war. Okay. So, so Texas, so Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas won't be destroyed with the Russian missiles. They'll spare them for now. Well, it's not sparing. God's not going to allow Texas or Oklahoma to be destroyed or North and South Dakota or Nebraska or the other places. And why has God allowed in the tens of millions of Mexicans to flee into America? Why? Because when the Chinese come across Mexico, they're going to wipe out everything. And so God has allowed the Democrats to do what they've done just the same as he allowed the Syrians and the people from northern Iraq to flee so that they won't be destroyed in the nuclear war. And he's allowed millions of Mexicans to flee here and South Americans so that they will not die. So the majority of the Mexicans are in Texas and Arizona, pretty much in New Mexico, right? Yeah. Those three states. And God, uh, well, Texas. they're everywhere. The school I teach is majority Mexican now. Really? Majority. Huh. Yeah, okay. they're everywhere. They're coming in by the millions. But why has this happened? I'm against it. I think it's wrong to have our borders open. I think it's wrong. Okay, but God has allowed it because he sees what's going to happen at the midpoint of the tribulation period. The Chinese are coming. They're going to rape every woman they can find. Hundreds, million of them don't even have a wife. And so destruction is coming. So God has allowed them to come across the border because everything, Pastor Paul, Brother Paul, is coming to a conclusion. Jesus is coming back. So, so we reported on our last broadcast that since October, over 10,000 Chinese men that have caught them at the Mexican border trying to enter, 10,000 military-aged Chinese men from October of last year to now, it's 11,000% increase. So it does look like that China is trying to insert military age Chinese men right now into America. Are you familiar with the prophecy of Dmitry Dudeman, the Romanian uh, pastor? Uh, he came to America in the 1980s and he warned that uh, Russia uh, will launch a surprise nuclear attack against the United States uh, uh, in the future, but God sent him, he didn't even speak English, in, uh, to America in the 1980s and he went around the churches we also have David Wilkerson, Henry Groover, and then now we have your prophecy from 2007. So it does look like that God is confirming uh, all of these prophecies, and they're all coming to pass right now. So let's talk about the Chinese. You said there, there's going to be a major Chinese invasion from Mexico and Canada. Is that what God has told you? Yeah, in his opening too, which you haven't heard much anything about that, but in his opening too, the Ch because after much of America and Russia are destroyed at the beginning of the tribulation period, it frees China up at the middle of the tribulation period to con to try to conquer the United States, but they are going to be defeated. Now, look what God says in the book of Amos, third chapter, the seventh verse. Every, I'm, I'm reading from King James here. Everybody uh, open your Bible or your app on your phone. Seventh verse of the third chapter of Amos. God says, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay. So in other words, God says, I can't destroy nations or allow, excuse me, God tips nobody. He doesn't destroy. He allows, he removes his hands of protection and allows destruction to come as a judgment. So God says, I cannot bring judgment. I cannot allow this to happen without warning people first. He always warns. What is the reason for his opening? Just to cause people to be afraid? No, it's to warn people. People did not believe me in 2007. I mean, they would say things like, we're gonna kill this guy. And no other preacher will ever dare say that Russia will attack Ukraine. It will never happen after we kill him. Of course, it would scare my wife. And, and I would just tell her to not read that stuff, stay off of it. Thousands and thousands of Ukrainians through my preaching, uh, excuse me, thousands and thousands of Jewish people in eastern Ukraine have fled. I mean, into the tens of thousands through my preaching, left eastern Ukraine and went to the western side of the Nipper River or fled into uh, to Israel. I mean, God wanted there to not be another Holocaust of Jews. 
And so he used my preaching. And there's a lady by the name of Natalia Krizhanovskaya. She presented his opening to the, all the churches, Baptist, Pentecostal, Charismatic, uh, uh, Jewish Messianic, to the synagogues all over southeastern Ukraine in Donetsk and Lugansk, because that's what I told the people living in Donetsk and Lugansk. They have to get out. War is coming to that area. And so uh, anyway, God did that to warn people. Why did he show me the cities in America that are going to be destroyed? Well, at, it will take place after the rapture of the church. Listen to me. The nuclear war between the United States and Russia will take place after the rapture of the church. God gave a Zobinus so people could flee from the cities that are going to be destroyed into the areas that are not going to be destroyed so that they can survive. Millions of wonderful people who are not born again will be left behind at the rapture, and God wants them to get saved. He doesn't want them to be destroyed in the nuclear war. So God warned me. He, he gave the cities that will be destroyed during the nuclear war, the American cities. Now, I do believe there's a nuclear war coming to the Middle East before the rapture. God says the Psalm 83 war twice God says when the day of the Lord is near when the day of the Lord is near we can look at Isaiah the 17th chapter when Damascus is destroyed by a nuclear weapon this has not happened and it's going to happen soon now why would God allow the nuclear war to take place between the United States and a reformed Soviet Union on November 11th that God spoke to me back in 2011 the reason November 11th is because the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower, and before they landed, they wrote out the Mayflower Compact, a covenant that the pilgrims would found a nation that would be a city on the hill, uh, like the old, like the nation of Israel. America would become a nation like Israel, a city set on the hill, and so that took place on November 11th, 1620, over 400 years ago. So November 11th, America has now broken the covenant. We allow, men, our Supreme Court allows men to marry men, women to wear, marry women. We've aborted well over 60 million of our babies. We know better. We broke it, not God. So the nuclear war will take place on November 11th. 